Oh, God, so many stocks and so little time. I truly do need an AI assistant. I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot, and this is Monday. It's January 8th. Now, what I like to do on this show is share hot penny stocks with you, stocks under five bucks that you can find on any market. And I'm particularly looking for those that can make us money. And most of the time, the hot penny stocks I share with you, I find when I'm looking at the charts. I just find it quick and easy to see heat in a chart, a heck of a lot faster than you can in the news. I can see a blue tsunami telling me volume's coming in. I can see a green hook cutting through a red line, putting an X on the board as a breakout. I can see a long-running surge. Well, when I see heat in a chart, then I'll take the time to go rummaging around through all those press releases and filings looking for a catalyst, looking for something to get the chart moving or keep it moving. When I find a hot piece of information to go with my hot chart, I've got myself a hot penny stock. And these are the sort of stocks I like to share with you on a regular basis. Well, today I do have a hot stock for you, but it's not one that I found. This is a Quest of Therapeutics, ticker AQST. This was brought to my attention on Thursday during my live streaming event, which I do every Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. This gives my viewers a chance to bring stocks to me that maybe I'm not covering, and this was one of them we looked at. And once I put out the video, there was a lot of buzz about this company, and I've gotten at least a half a dozen requests to take a closer look at it. So that's what we're going to do. So a quest of she finished today at $2.52 with just about 8% gains. She is on the NASDAQ, and you're going to get benefits trading this penny stock on a major exchange. First off, they're free to trade. There's no transaction fees trading penny stocks in the major exchanges like there are on the OTC. Plus, you get to trade this pre-market, after-market. You can never do that on the OTC, and there is a lot of activity in those periods of trading. Not to mention, there is a lot more volume and a lot more money up on the major exchanges. So yeah, I think trading penny stocks on the major exchanges are safer and more fun and profitable. So AQST, what is exactly that she does? Well, they tell us over here at her website, aquestive.com, that the company is a pharmaceutical company. Yeah, they are. They work with drugs, but they're really not creating drugs for the most part. They are creating a new delivery method, a novel way to get the drugs into your system. They tell us they have developed an orally administered product that delivers complex molecules providing a novel alternative to the invasive injections and the inconvenient pills. Aquestive has five commercialized products, I think they're up to six now, by our licensees in the U.S. and around the world. I think they've got eight deals right now and they are in six different countries. The company also collaborates with other pharmaceutical companies to bring new molecules to market using a proprietary best-in-class technology like farm film which is a proven drug development and has strong potential for commercialization. The company is also advancing their drug pipeline focused on treating diseases of the central nervous system and for the treatment of severe allergic reactions, including anaphylaxis, which we're going to get into more. So let's take a look at what this is really all about, the farm film. Farm film is their silver bullet. They tell us here that Farm Film is a unique and versatile technology for high-performance drug delivery. And that's important, but we cannot overlook the convenience factor here. They did a survey and they asked people, if you had a choice to take your medication, which would you prefer? An injection, pill, nasal administration, or the film? Yes, overwhelmingly most chose the film. I would. I have an aversion to taking pills. They get stuck now. When I was younger, I could take a handful of them. Now I can barely get one down. So I would love the film. But more importantly, how well does it work? Is the drug getting into the system fast? Obviously, the fastest way is through an injection to put the drug directly into the body or into the bloodstream. Second, surprisingly, is inhalation, where the drug is attached to your oxygen and then goes into your bloodstream. And the third one is absorbing it through soft tissue like your mouth. And that's where they use their film. 
Particularly, they would like to see it either go on the side of your cheek or underneath your tongue, but it'll work on top of the tongue, no problem. Because this does not go through your digestive tract, it's not going through any metabolic changes. It is just being absorbed right through the skin into your bloodstream. And it works just as well, if not better, than the original drugs. Now, the company was telling us that they are working with a film and drug combination for anaphylaxis. This is a serious allergic reaction. It can kill you folks. Doesn't matter if you're allergic to a food or an insect bite. When it hits, it hits hard and fast. You break out in hives. You start to swell. You can't swallow. You stop breathing. You pass out. You could literally die from this. Well, what they have is epinephrine, the EpiPen. This is a pre-dosed factory made syringe that you carry around. When this happens, you just stab yourself in some fleshy spot and you get your drug. Well, here's the problem with that. First off, it is huge, right? It's very expensive. They cost hundreds of dollars. And being the size that it is, they discovered in that survey that of the people that have prescriptions for the EpiPen, less than 50% actually have the pen with them when they need it. And worse yet, of all the people that should have prescriptions, more than 60% do not. So the market is wide open. And I do believe the problem is cost prohibitive. I mean, I think these pens are just too bloody expensive. Forget the fact they're so big. They're just so expensive. I got to imagine, not that I know for a fact, but I got to imagine that these film strips are a lot less expensive than they are. Now, the company tells us they've got other drugs in the pipeline, so let's go take a look at those. Now, at first glance, it appears we've got nine drugs in the pipeline, but we don't, do we? Six of them are out of the pipeline, on the market being commercialized. They've already made eight deals to sell these six drugs in six different countries around the world, including the United States. They've got another drug here that is just about ready to be approved and hit in the market. This is Libervant. It's working with the molecule drug diazepam, which is real critical for people who have epilepsy because this fights their seizures, whether they be breakthrough seizures or cluster seizures. And as I said, they are at the end of their FDA approval process and should be hitting the market here soon. And the last drug we got here is Anafilm. This is the epinephrine replacement for the EpiPen. Now, they've got another drug just like this one, but it's going for a different indicator, a different problem with allergies. They don't tell us exactly what. But here they tell us they are in phase two for the anafilm. That's not true. We just got news out that they have just entered into phase three. Now, what exactly is this drug? Well, they tell us that anafilm is a polymer matrix-based epinephrine pro-drug candidate. A pro-drug is great, folks. This is a drug that has no side effects whatsoever. Once you use the drug, if there's anything left over in your system, it just dispels it out of your body. The product is smaller than a postage stamp and weighs far less than an ounce and begins to dissolve on contact. No water necessary. You don't even need to swallow. The packaging for the Anafilm is thinner and smaller than an average credit card and can be carried in a pocket. It can be carried in your wallet, guys. No excuse for not having this. And the packaging is designed to be weatherproof. No sunlight's going to get in there. No water. So this is a hot drug, folks. <laughs> I mean that because people are paying hundreds of dollars for this giant pen that they normally don't have with them. This is going to be a lot cheaper, easy to carry, and easy to take. No pain involved, right? And when you think about it, when a person does go into anaphylactic shock, they will pass out in a lot of cases. They're not going to be able to help. And if you don't have a pen, don't worry. All you got to do is open their mouth and put that film in there and you've done your job and you're helping them. All right, so now that we've got an overall view of what the company's about, let's go get some information on the stock. So we're back here at my storehouse of information, the otcmarkets.com website. We are looking at Equestive's relative volume. Over the last 30 days, she's been doing roughly 600,000 shares. Today, she did three times that much, a 300% increase in her volume, jumping to almost 1.8 million shares. Share structure for AQST, outstanding share count is about 67 million. 
I don't know what the float is. They don't tell us. I know it's not going to be more than the outstanding share count, so it won't be over 67 million, and it could be considerably less. Market cap for the company, about 156 million. Financials for a quest of looking good. Over the last four years, she's been doing roughly $50 million a year, and she's taken home over 50% of that in profit. Looking at her quarterlies, not bad. She's growing over the last year, going from $11.4 million a year ago to just over $13 million at the end of September 2023. And her profit margin is growing right along with those revenues. Balance sheet for the company. Yes, we got money in the bank, about $25 million. Total assets, about $60 million. Total liabilities, it's a big number. Big, $162 million, which gives us stockholder deficit, not equity, of $102 million. Taking a look at those disclosures, we've got some 8Ks here and a 10Q. Obviously, that 10Q is real important. You want to know about the company? They've got everything in there from the day they incorporated, every deal they've made, all the corporations that have invested in this company. Everything is there. So don't be going over to Google, going from site to site, getting one piece of the puzzle. Just grab the box of puzzle pieces right there. Now, of these 8Ks, this is the only one I think you really need to concern yourself with. They just came out with a corporate presentation. It's a digital brochure. This gives you information in easy to read format, though there's a lot of white space in here. You can just scroll through here and get all the information that you're looking for. But as I said, if you're after hardcore information, jump into that 10K or 10Q. They'll give you everything. Looking at the news for the company, we've got three here to consider, in my opinion. One all the way back to the beginning of November where the company completed a $45 million debt refinancing, which is great. They were able to get it refinanced, pushed off, took all that pressure off of them. But what it really did was save them $25 million over the next two years. That's excellent. Then we've got two pieces of news here about that drug, Anafilm. It was halfway through November that they presented positive data for it. And here at the beginning of December, they entered into their phase three trial. They tell us that a quest of therapeutics today announced that the first patient has been dosed in its initial phase three pivotal pharmacokinetic clinical study of Anafem, the epinephrine sublingual film. Anafilm is the company's orally administered epinephrine pro-drug product candidate under development for the treatment of severe, life-threatening allergic reactions, including anaphylaxis. Now, this is going to be a two-part phase three study. They are going to do the first part on single dose, the one you get initially, and then the follow-up dose, one that you get 30 minutes after you've had the first dose. So, they're going to have two studies on that. The first study, they're going to bring in 36 subjects. The second study, they're going to bring in 64 subjects. So that's where we're at, folks. We have this moving into phase three. I don't know how long this phase three is going to be. I don't know if they are pitting their drug up against a lot of competitors who are using film or they're just competing up against the regular old drugs. Haven't got a clue, but it has started. Let's go take a look at the chart now for this company. Well, I'm ready to chart this bad boy on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. This is AQST, a quest of therapeutics, and we are looking at a six-month, four-hour view. It was a full six months ago in April. We had our low bubble of $1.15 when she was way above the 200. She took off, had a strong climb up to $2.69, which she hit in May, and then a lot of volatility came into this chart. We had a big drop through the 200, a big surge through the 200, and then a long drawn out fall back up underneath the 200. She had a strong rip here showing that she wanted to climb again, fell down to the bottom of this channel, and from there, she has changed her trend. She is working up this channel, getting out of it once, and then coming all the way back down to the floor. And it was right back here when we looked at it on Thursday. She was at about two bucks and she has been climbing ever since, floating on her nine day SMA, getting up to the top of this channel. Every single one of our SMAs have now turned and are starting to climb, including our 200. 
volume, as you can see, is growing right now. And all of our oscillators are pushing up and climbing, except the RSI, which was up at nearly 80 and has fallen down to 69.8, which is still pretty hot. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. So we were back here in the middle of this channel, fell right down to the bottom of the channel and bounced off of it. She was just going sideways around her 50-day until she approached the 200. That was it. It was flat and she broke out. Pushed over the 200 through the center of the channel, outside of the channel, and back up underneath it on top of her nine. Looking good, folks. Our oscillators. Our PPO is strong, but it has had a little bit of pullback here. Same as our MACD, and our RSI is cooling off even more. She's down to 59 right now. Looking at our five-day, five-minute chart. Now, that's looking good, isn't it? Here's our channel, these three lines here. We're down at the bottom of the channel, almost tapping it here at $1.95. She's hanging on to her 200, bounced off that 200 a couple times, and took off on her 50. And she has launched herself. Now, she's gotten up to the top of the channel, and she's fighting. She is trying to get through there. She's been through it a couple times. She's banging her head on it right now. I think she's going to want to get out. But all of our SMAs, Every single one of them, including our 200, is starting to roll over. So we've got to watch for a bounce if we want this to start climbing again. Now this looks like it's coming down. Let me take a look at, say, our 15-minute. No. How about our uh, one-hour? Yeah, it really is sitting on the nine-day SMA here on the one-hour. Coming down to our five-minute, it looks like she's dangling and going to fall all the way down here to the 200, which I really don't think she's going to do. Our oscillators, these are the coolest of all the charts. Our PPO is underneath the pink line, falling a little bit. We've got a crossover going on on our MACD right now to the downside. Ooh, and our RSI is falling down to 43. Pretty chilly down there. But all in all, I think AQST has got a good thing going. They've got six drugs on the market in six different countries being sold by eight other companies. So it's not like they're hurting for revenues. They're doing about $50 million every year and their revenues are growing. Their profits are growing. Problem is we are in deficit right now. So we need to see some assets come into the pictures even if they are revenues. AQST, I covered it for you folks because you asked for it. Now go put it on your watch list. And of course, folks, I didn't cover everything. There is more information to know, probably in that 10Q. So go do your own due diligence, considering that you're investing your own money. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.